Don't threaten me, Roger. You can't do anything anymore. I just got engaged, and my fiance's family is very powerful. Mimi, I don't think so. No, 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 no. I'm engaged to another woman. Mimi is out of my life forever. <clears throat> Pardon, madame. A woman is on the terrace. She has to see you. Okay, fortune cookie time. <laughs> <laughs> the woman of your dreams is thinking of you all the time. Well, that's true. <laughs> What's your say? What is it, Gwen? Let's see what's gotten you so upset. Your love is threatened by someone close by. That's ridiculous. There isn't anyone near or far who can take me away from you. Got it? Got it. Shall I tell you what your secret is? Are you brave enough to hear it out loud after all these years of burying it deep in your soul? The thing you fear above all else been made public. Do you want to hear it now? No! That gypsy can't know. She can't. What if anybody found out? Well, Timmy, that takes care of the Russell family. <laughs> you put a hurting on them, Jennifer. <laughs> Another victim. Hide. Welcome back. I'm not coming in. Don't you want to know your future? I already know it. Oh, I don't think so. Unless you'd rather clean fish than live in a mansion. <laughs> then fine, keep going. How did you know? I told you. I see everything. Come on. Come here. Why not? I've got nothing else to lose. our bus home. Oh, Mom, we just got here. Don't worry about leaving already. Okay. Well, where do you want to start? Oh, there are so many booths and rides and games and... and people. Mom, listen to me. Nothing bad's going to happen to us, okay? We're here to have fun and see how regular people live. This is our first step into the world together. If we can do this, we can do anything. Maybe even find your lost sister. <laughs> It's only me, your wife, not a ghost. C'est fini, Roger. As for now, I am in business for myself. You have a grave misunderstanding of a drug trade, Jean-Luc. And me. I'll tell you when our association is over. I can't talk about this now. You double-crossed me, Jean-Luc. I want my money tonight. I'm not threatened by you, Roger, anymore. 
My fiancée and her family will protect me. I don't give a damn who this girl is. I want a meeting with you now. You're lying dog, Jean-Luc. So as soon as I talk to Sheldon Klein, her heart will be broken like you broke mine. It's just a fortune cookie, Gwen. Your fortune was right on the money. The woman of your dreams is always thinking of you. That's true, I am. So since mine made a little sense, yours has to be true? Your love is threatened by someone close by. I don't like it, that's all. It's ridiculous, Gwen. <laughs> How could you possibly believe that any woman close by, or anywhere for that matter, could possibly be a threat to us? I shouldn't even be here. Nobody's twisting your arm, Teresa. Well, this doesn't mean I forgive you for what you said to my friend Whitney. You really upset her with all that garbage about her father going to kill someone. I call them like I see them. Well, Whitney doesn't believe you anyway. Her mother told her you were a complete fake. You're not so sure, are you? You knew a few things about me, but not everything. Maybe I didn't tell you everything I saw. Well, if you really could see the future in that stupid crystal ball, you would have told me that I was never going to have another chance with Ethan Crane. You sound very sure of that. I am. I've lost the man I love forever. Let's see if you're right, Teresa. Let's see what your future really holds. Poor kid. Doesn't know what she's in for. Oh, I'm sorry, mademoiselle. We never used that door. There is another one over there. Oh, thank you. I wish I knew what that woman wanted. You do not know her? I've never seen her before. Soon you will know what it's like to be betrayed. You swine! What are you doing here, Nina? Watching you celebrate your engagement to a woman who does not look like a horse. You told me that you love me, not her. I want you, I love you. Not until I talk to Sheridan Crane and tell her about her fiancé. I gave you the best part of my life. I will not be played for a fool. Where are you? Around the... Mademoiselle? I guess I should know better than sneaking up behind a policeman, even if he is my husband. I'm just surprised you came back. You're supposed to be resting. Sam, stop worrying about me. I'm fine. So fine that you keep seeing and hearing an imaginary little girl? I think I'm losing my mind. Of course not. I just think that you're stressed out, overworked. You know, I hate being a burden to you. You, Grace Bennett, can never be a burden to me. The reason why I wake up in the morning, not to mention the reason why I race back to bed at night. <laughs> you know, Sam, I was thinking about something the little girl said the last time I heard her. Grace, it's almost time. Grace, there is no little girl. Sam, please, just hear me out, okay? Okay. I didn't see the little girl the last time. I just heard her voice, and she told me that I should be prepared. That she was coming. I'm wondering if she could be my sister. My sister, I never knew I had. Chill, Mom. You jump out of your skin anytime somebody even looks in our direction. I I'm just not used to being around so many people. But they're nice people. Nobody's out to do us any harm. See, she smiled right at you, Mom. Look how nice everyone is. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. I'm just not used to it. This isn't necessary, Ethan. Ah, very interesting. It says, forget about last fortune, was made by new guy in Cookie Factory. <laughs> there, you see? Hey, forget about the last one. No woman is coming between me and the woman I'm nuts about. Meaning you. Okay, you win. I'm convinced. <laughs> That's my girl. I still can't believe you're so insecure about us. 
earlier when you were crying? I told you. It was because of Sheridan's great news of getting engaged. I know you're happy about Sheridan, but... But what, Ethan? I was just wondering if some of those tears were because you were afraid of losing me. I see you in a very large room. It must be the cannery where I start work tonight. No. You're holding a spoon. A small spoon overflowing with caviar. Me cleaning the row out of tomorrow's catch of the day. You're not in a cannery, and you're not cleaning fish. Maybe we just better forget this. Really. No, wait. Where am I with this spoon dripping with caviar? You know. You're in a mansion. You look very happy. You're giving orders to your servants. I have servants? Lots. One is mixing you a drink, and, and the other is, is, is doing some alteration on a gown you're wearing. I'm wearing a gown? What color? Lavender. Oh, lavender. Good. I look great in lavender. What's the gown made of? It, it's... it's... It's shiny and, and sort of expensive looking. Satin! I love satin. And the neckline? I hope it's not too conservative. Oh, don't worry. Oh, it shows off your figure. Oh In fact, there's someone admiring you. Who? Oh, a man? Am I in a mansion with a man? Yes, I see a man. It must be Ethan. What's he look like? He's gone. Oh, oh, I see something else. Now, you're, you're in another room, and you're, you're at a desk writing. Maybe the library. Are you signing your name to some papers? Uh, uh, you have two rings on your left hand. I'm married. The, the rock in your engagement ring is so huge, it's covering what you're writing. I thought I was signing my name. Your new name. Your married name. Oh, my gosh. Can you see? Let me look. Oh, watch oh, out, will you? I'm sorry. I just have to know. What's my married last name? Well, I think it... It's a... A C. Crane! It must be Crane! <sighs> when Rosie was at my booth earlier, she said something about having a twin. And when she said that, it set something off inside me. The sister. The one you don't even know that you have. Now you think she could be your twin? I'm grasping at straws, are I? I would be too, if I didn't remember the first 20 years of my life. You know, a part of me just says I should forget all about this and be thankful for it, the life that I have now with you and the girls. But Sam, another part of me, I don't know if I can stop. Grace, there's something I have to tell you. At the station, I used the computer to look up some information about your past. Computer? Yeah, I went online. Uh, missing persons chat room. You hate the computer. As much as I love you. You didn't want me to be disappointed. Like all the other times that you searched and couldn't find anything about the years I forgot. I just didn't want you to get your hopes up. So why are you telling me now? Well, I found someone in the chat room. Someone that may know you. Are you sure? Well, they knew about your moles on your left shoulder. <laughs> oh my god, Sam, finally. Who is it? Well, I don't know. The name they use in the chat room is Seeker. Does that mean anything to you? Charity, I do not want a shirt with my name on it. What about that name you use online in the chat room? Seeker. I'll get you a t-shirt that says Seeker. <laughs> oh, I don't think so, honey. They're gonna think I'm looking for a man. Would that be so terrible? <laughs> Charity. Finally. What? You're laughing. You haven't done that in so long. This is a good omen, Mom. Now, I'm going to buy you this T-shirt no matter what you say. <laughs> if you know who's responsible for my father's death, 
You tell me their name. You'll find out in due time. When? Soon. You look upset, Coach Russell. Was it something I said? How do you know these things? How do you know about my leg? I told you, I could see things in people's lives. Now do you believe me? Look here, lady. I don't know what games you're playing, but you stay away from my daughter, you understand that? As a matter of fact, you stay away from my entire family. Hey, hello, hello. It's Hi. your husband. Hi, TC, I'm sorry. Sweetheart, I just want to apologize for snapping at you earlier today when you asked me about my leg. It's okay. I mean, you can growl at me every once in a while. You don't deserve it. You're a rock, Eve. You're a family's anchor. And I'm sorry if sometimes I let my old baggage make me short temper with you and the girls sometimes. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you either, TC. <laughs> you hurt me? It's never happened before and it never will. Perfect. Oh, sorry. My fault. Hey, great carnival this year. Yes. As long as you believe that there's no one in the world that can come between us. But Ethan, how can you be so sure? There are lots of women out there who are pretty and smart and sexy. I already got someone who has all of those things in spades. It's the only girl for me, Gwen Hotchkiss. She's perfect in every way, except for this one little streak of insecurity, which I don't understand at all. Well, it must be one of those Venus-Mars things. Men just don't get it. Wait a minute. These doubts of yours, they started when you got back from Paris. Did Sheridan say something to you? We talked. I never realized how hurt your aunt has been by love in the past. None of her relationships ever seemed to work out. Her heart was broken. I have never heard anyone describe it the way Sheridan did. All the dreams and hopes of a life with the man she loves, they were just suddenly, suddenly shattered, torn apart like the wings of a butterfly. That's how delicate and fragile love can be. Some loves, not ours. Ours is built on something strong and solid. We've known each other forever. We're from the same stock. There's nothing fragile about that. Still, Ethan, you never know what's around the corner. Who? I know it! I'm going to be Mrs. Ethan Crane. You're a little ahead of yourself. But you saw it right there in your crystal ball. Me with the last name Crane. What's the matter with me? I must be crazy to believe any of this. You overheard me talking about Ethan earlier. That's where this great vision of yours comes from. An idiot me. I'm desperate enough to buy anything. My crystal ball doesn't lie. Well, then it needs polishing. My brother Luis was right. It's time for me to grow up and get over my childish fantasies. It's only in movies where a rich boy like Ethan falls in love with a housekeeper's daughter. In the real world, he marries the debutante from the right side of the tracks. I thought you had more imagination than that. My imagination is what got me into trouble to begin with. It's time for me to stop wishing for things I'll never have. No more impossible dreams, no more Ethan. What if I tell you something else? Suppose and I tell you something that only you know is true. And then if I get it right, you know that I must see into the future. But you can't. I see your room at home. It's small and messy, and the walls are with pictures. Uh, they seem to be cut out of glossy magazines. There, there are uh, fancy houses and uh, uh, expensive dresses and society parties and lots and lots of pictures of Ethan Crane. How am I doing? Possibly know all of that. I told you. I can see your life. Your past, your present, I want to believe you so much, but I'm trying to be mature. The 
think about it, Teresa. Either I'm very good at making wild guesses or I'm telling you the truth. And you'll live in a mansion as Mrs. Crane. It's your choice whether you believe it or not. I believe you. I do. I'm gonna marry Ethan after all. What are you doing out here? There was some woman who sent a message that she wanted to see me. Well, she, she must have uh, changed her mind. Let's go back inside. Do you hear that sound? Uh, no, no, no. Let's go back inside. Let me out! Let me out! You can't keep her away from me, Jean-Luc! I will tell everything to Sheridan Crane. I will tell her everything tonight. Excuse me, have you seen that woman that was looking for me? The one on the terrace? Uh, no, mademoiselle. That's so strange. She just disappeared. The bien, please. We're leaving so soon? Well, we just got here, Jean-Luc. I have a better way for us to celebrate our engagement. You haven't seen my house in the country. You want to go there tonight? Why not? I mean, it might not be fancy, you know, the way you are used to, but uh, it's very quiet and très, 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 très intime. It sounds wonderful. Our lives together will be so wonderful. I love you. I love you. Nothing will come between us. Let me out! Let me out! So wish me luck in the contest tomorrow. Hey, good luck. Thanks. I'll see you. Take care. You too. Charity's right. This is a friendly town. I'm so sorry. It's... It's just a shirt. But it's such a nice shirt. I hope I didn't ruin it. No. Anyway, it was my fault. No, I should have been looking where I was going. Really, don't worry about it. Are you sure? Yeah, no harm done. Let me get you some new sodas. No, it's all right. I'm not thirsty anyway. Uh, I, I better go. Sure. Me too. Maybe I'll see you around? I'm just visiting Harmony for the day. Too bad. Charity? Charity? Oh, hi, Mom. Here's your shirt. I can't believe you spent good money on this. <laughs> you only live one. Oh, well, yeah, whatever you say. Yeah, I just met the nicest man a couple minutes ago. I think you're right. I think this is a very nice town. Wouldn't it be great if we could live here? Hey, Miguel. Oh, hey, Coach Russell. What's her name? What's whose name? That goofy look you have on your face. You can only be put there by a girl. So who is she? Oh, I'm such a jerk. I forgot to ask her. I'm sure you'll take care of that. I hope so. She's not from around here. I might never see her again. You're too young to be a pessimist. That's what Mrs. Bennett always tells me. Sounds like Grace. Have you seen her around? I've been looking all over for her. Mrs. Bennett? Yeah, I just ran into her. She seemed a little... I don't know. Why? What did she say? It's more what she didn't say. You know Mrs. Bennett. She usually likes to stop and talk a bit. Ask about my family, especially Mama. I guess she just had other stuff on her mind. Running the carnival and all. Yeah. I'm sure that's all it is. I can't. I just can't remember anything. It's okay, sweetheart. 
probably shouldn't have told you about the chat. No, don't say that. I'm glad you did. I just I wish I knew who this seeker was. Are you cold? No, not exactly. I just feel weird. I've never felt like this before. about losing me to someone close by? No, the only thing I'm worried about is not living through this ride. <laughs> <sighs> You're sure? You definitely saw me write Crane for my last name. C-R-A-N-E. There's no mistake. I knew it! Deep down, I knew it! I'm going to marry Ethan! Oh, shit, you <laughs> knock over my table! I'm just so excited! Let me pay you for my most incredible, wonderful, true fortune! Oh, sorry, I forgot I was broke. No, no problem. This one's on the house. <laughs> Thanks. And don't worry, when I become Mrs. Ethan Crane, I'll be the richest woman in harmony. I'll look you up and pay you what you deserve for giving me back all my hopes and dreams. I promise I won't forget this. You've got that right. You won't forget this day. Timmy's confused. Tell me something I didn't know. You came here to make people's lives miserable with your fortunes. That girl left happy. You said her dream would come true. Believe me, Timmy. Teresa won't have quite the life she imagines. But she told her she'd be living in a mansion as Mrs. Crane. True enough, but it won't come to her easily. There are lots of surprises in store for her, and she's going to have to make lots of critical choices. And whatever she chooses, she's going to hurt people she loves. I almost feel sorry for her. You, Tabitha? I said almost. I'm going to enjoy watching what that girl does with her life. Believe me, Timmy, she's going to be like a tornado sweeping through this town. <laughs> His name is Pierre. He works for me. Get out of here. You and you go in. I'm going nowhere until you pay me the money you owe. I told you I don't work for you anymore. As for now, I'm in business for myself. Uh, you're mistaken. We made a deal to bring the drugs into the country together. I want my share now. Uh, if I say no? That would be a very unfortunate answer, Jean-Luc. Well, oh, but it's uh, the only answer I have for you. So, get out of my apartment. I would reconsider if I were you. Well, you're not me. My answer is final. And do not try to do anything foolish. I know. The family of your fiancé is very powerful. <sighs> Watch over me, Diana. Keep me from losing love the night I finally found it. The way you did. I have a feeling if I can just get through this one night and nothing goes wrong, I'm safe. I'll have love forever. Hello? Hey, Sheridan, it's me. <sighs> Ethan, is everything all right? It's about Gwen. I need your help. Mm. Hey, you two. Hey, TC. Hi. Eve. All right, we've been looking all over for you. Can't a guy take his best girl for a walk around the car? I guess a guy can do whatever he wants to do when he's chief of police. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you feeling? Much better, doctor. Well, that's a relief. 
Miguel said you weren't quite yourself when he saw you a few minutes ago. Luis's brother, Miguel? Yeah, Kay's friend. I haven't seen him since the fire at the Burger Hut earlier. Did you know that person, Mom? I don't know anyone here. But she waved. Well, she smiled at me. I didn't want to be rude. Well, maybe I'm getting into the spirit of the place. That's good to hear, Mom. Because I have a great idea. Not any more goofy t-shirts, I hope? No. It's even better than that. You'll see. <laughs> Timmy's had a tough day. Timmy wants to go home. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Is that all you think about? What about what Tabitha wants? There's still time left today to destroy another life or two. Let's see who's around. That's odd. What is it, Tabitha? My ball is getting all dark inside. Never done that before. Something's not right. Maybe it's tired. Maybe it wants to go home too. How did you do that? I didn't, you fool. Someone else did. Timmy's scared. So am I, Timmy. So am I. You can put your shirt back on, Miguel. I'm the only girl around. Hey, sis. For your information, my shirt's off because some soda got spilled on it. Don't worry. I'll get the stain out for you. And I think I'll bring dinner home tonight so Mama doesn't have to cook. Who are you, and what have you done with my sister, Teresa? <laughs> I am not that <laughs> self-centered, McGill. I'm just kidding. You know before, when you said you believed you could fall in love with someone at first sight? You laughed at me. I know, but I've been thinking. Maybe you can. <sighs> not maybe. You absolutely can. I know it for a fact. Okay, what's up with your good mood? <laughs> I thought for sure you'd be ready to jump off the old Cape Bridge once the Wees told you'd be working at the cannery this summer. Oh, who cares about that? I just got the best news of my life. I'm happy for you, sis. As long as it's not about Ethan Crane. Oh, no, Teresa, not again. Yes, again. I now know never to doubt my dreams. It turns out I'm going to end up with Ethan after all. Well, that's good, because I've been meaning to tell you. I'm going to end up with Nev Campbell. We can double date. Come on, Teresa. Don't do this to yourself. You're gonna get hurt all over again. Not this time. This time I know it's true, and, and I won't let anything stand in my way. I'm afraid to ask, but what makes you so sure? You're gonna laugh, but I don't care. A fortune teller told me my future. She said I was going to be the next Mrs. Crane. That's what I said. Get real, Ethan. A fortune cookie? It said her love was threatened by someone close by. And Gwen believed that? Crazy, isn't it? Gwen's always been so level-headed. And you've tried reassuring her? Everything I could think of. What do I do, Sheridan? <sighs> you love her? You know I do. I mean, do you really love her? Absolutely. I mean, I'm nuts about her. Well, you know she wants to spend the rest of her life with you. Yes, that's come up. You called me for my advice, right? Sheridan, you know me better than anyone. I'll do whatever you say. Okay. Listen closely, Ethan. Are you listening? Yes. Ask her to marry you. What? I don't think I heard you. You did too. Propose to her as soon as you get off the phone with me. But... No, no buts. You said she's the girl for you, right? Right? You can't imagine yourself with anyone else, right? Right? Then why are you torturing her? Don't be such a coward, Ethan. Trust me. Commitment feels great. I guess you like being engaged. Like it? I'm flying. I can't wait to be Jean-Luc's wife. You want me to break the news to Pater and Associates? You'd better let me. I know the family will blow a fuse, but they'll learn to accept Jean-Luc. He's very successful. You never said what Jean-Luc does for a living. 
It's something in import-export. You know me, I don't have a head for these things. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> Gwen is back, I have to go. I love you, Sheridan. I love you too, kiddo. And I mean it. Your life is going to be as wonderful as mine is right now. I understand this, Jean-Luc. I don't care about your fiancée and her family. Anyone who crosses me is dead. Including her. Who is that? Sheridan. Still on cloud nine. Oh, why wouldn't she be? She's going to marry the man she loves. Miguel made it seem like he had just seen you. I remember if I talked to him. Well, it doesn't matter just as long as you're okay. <laughs> you can all stop trading your meaningful looks. Sam told me about the person on the internet. Well, you know me. I couldn't keep a secret from Grace if my life depended on it. And it didn't upset you? No. I just have so many questions. I mean, was this seeker a man or a woman? And how are they connected to me? Or was their description of me just a lucky guest to lead us on? If it wasn't, then why did they break off contact? All the questions I've been asking myself. But at least that's a lead, Grace. I mean, that's the first one you had in, what, 20 years? Yeah, you're right, TC. It's just so frustrating. I don't know if I should forget about it or keep hoping. If only I could see into the future. What did I say? Well, let me guess. There's a gypsy around here telling people some wild fortunes. I don't think she's what you're looking for. I've never seen you scared before, Tabitha. <laughs> Quiet, Timmy, I'm trying to think. First my crystal ball blacks out, and now this damn itch. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. We're going home. First thing Timmy's going to do is make himself a big martini. You mean a martini? No. I mean a martini. It's my own recipe. It's special. Just like me. <laughs> What's in it? Cotton and a twist? I'm not telling. It's my own secret recipe. I'll find out. Come on. Let's go. Before they come. Who is they? <sighs> don't ask. I'm too afraid to tell you. Oh, no, you don't, Charity. Oh, come on, Mom. We can have our fortunes told. Absolutely not. Oh, come on, I've never even seen a gypsy. It'll be fun. I'm sorry, Charity, but I don't like these things. It's not serious. Come on, didn't we come here to laugh, have fun for a change? Mm, no, I can't say no to you when you look at me like that. Oh, that's what I was counting on. What's wrong, Tabitha? It's them. They're here. 